Welcome back to Life with Dr. Trish, where we talk about discoveries, life, and inspiration. This includes ancestry and DNA reveals and interesting discussions and stories as well. Let's get right into today's topic. Last month, I interviewed Christine Jacobson, who wrote a memoir about discovering her dad was black after being raised white. Rachel Dolezal was brought up in the discussion, which prompted me to see what she's been up to lately. I also saw a few interesting comments about Rachel in response to Christine's video. One viewer who suggested Christine is white no matter what her DNA shows suggested that Rachel, on the other hand, actually looked black and should get a DNA test. I found that comment very interesting and it made me wonder what is it about Rachel that makes some black people accept her decision to identify as black. Someone said, well, Rachel was married to a black man and she has black sons, suggesting that somehow made her more identifiable to black people. Does whom we marry and decide to have kids with make it acceptable to identify as another race though? I say no, but I'm not suggesting there is a right or wrong answer. It's definitely something that should make an interesting discussion though. It puts me in the mind of people who say, there's no way I can be racist because I have black friends or I have mixed grandchildren or my ex was black. I don't think our relationships with other people of different racial backgrounds automatically make us exempt from being insensitive to things like discrimination or from seeing the world different than those we choose to be in relationship with. Likewise, I don't see how the fact that Rachel prefers black men and has black children justifies her claim to be black. Some argue though that you should identify with whatever culture you were raised in. I have seen people say, if you were raised in the black culture, then you are black. I don't think we will get a consensus from everyone on that idea either. As we know, there are many people that enjoy the black culture, for example, many of the Kardashians, but it would be a stretch to call any of them black. Nevertheless, let's take a look at Rachel's story to see how her identification as a black woman developed. When we think about passing, we normally think about black people passing as white. There was a movie that came out on Netflix recently called Passing. I watched it and thought it was a good movie. Have you seen it yet? What were your thoughts about it? Leave a comment and let me know because I would love to talk to you about it. Anyway, just like portrayed in the movie, we are used to hearing about light-skinned black people who passed as white, which they historically did to make their lives easier. It wasn't easy living as a black person at any time in this country, and it's still challenging today. We often see people of other races enjoying the cool parts of identifying with the black culture, for example, music, style, swag, but we rarely see people of other races actually trying to pass as black. Well, then there is Rachel. The world came to know Rachel when she was publicly outed as pretending to be a black woman. She had been claiming to be black for 10 years at that point before she was outed by her biological parents and news organizations. At the time, Rachel was operating as the chapter president for the NAACP in Spokane, Washington. She also taught Africana studies at Eastern Washington University, where her students said she told them her mother was white and her father was black. Rachel had tan skin and she wore her hair in styles that black women wear. 
She wore kinky looking hair weave. She even went so far to call herself mixed race in an application to serve on a local police ombudsman commission. She also claimed a black man named Albert Wilkerson Jr. as her father. This is how far Rachel went to keep up the illusion. Allegedly, she even told her brother to lie for her and tell people that Albert Wilkerson was her father, if anyone asked. Mr. Wilkerson was contacted for a statement about whether he was Rachel's real father. He did not want to get involved or, as he said, throw anyone under the bus. But when asked if he was Rachel's father, he said, you already know the answer to that. Rachel's parents, Larry and Ruthann Dolezal, however, were much more direct about their daughter's identity. When contacted by national news stations, they confirmed Rachel was born white and was pretending to be black. Some have asked, regardless of Rachel's deception, why would her parents come out so publicly to address their daughter's identity? We will get to that in just a minute. First, I want to talk about how Rachel started to get so much public attention to the point that her identity was even questioned. As the chapter president of the NAACP in Spokane, Washington, Rachel made complaints about threatening hate mail she was receiving. Her Eastern Washington University bio also said that Rachel had been the victim of at least eight documented hate crimes. Rachel filed police reports to document what she described as racially motivated harassment, which also included a hanging of a noose at her home. Now remember, she did all of this while everyone was still under the impression that she was black. The police and the community started being suspicious of Rachel's claims. One of her co-workers stated they had never known the NAACP chapter to receive so much harassment even when there were much darker representatives running the organization. Several people started believing that Rachel lied about the harassment to get attention. Police reports stated that whoever was responsible for the activity, i.e. the threatening hate mail, had to have a key to the NAACP mailbox and Rachel was one of only two people with the key, the other person being the person who delivered the mail. Rachel ultimately resigned her position and also lost her teaching position at Eastern Washington University. When interviewed, Rachel's mother, Ruth Ann Dolezal, said, it's very sad that Rachel has not just been herself. Her effectiveness in the causes of the African-American community would have been so much more viable and she would have been more effective if she had just been honest with everybody. Rachel's parents said they had black friends and kept black people around Rachel growing up. I kind of get a feeling though that the Dolezal family saw their work in the black community as charity, which got me thinking about what Christine Jacobson said when I asked her about her parents. Christine said her parents loved black people, but that she came to realize that it was more of an idolization rather than seeing black people as regular people. I can relate to that because I remember being called exotic looking by random white strangers when I was a young woman in my teens and early 20s. I never took being called exotic as a compliment. To me, it always sounded like something unusual you would see at the zoo, which to me meant they didn't acknowledge me as a real person. It's a feeling that still comes to me when strangers become too personal about my daughter's red hair, even going so far as to touch it or rub it. Being labeled or seen as exotic 
can in fact be an insult. So I wonder if Rachel's parents taught her that type of view of black people. Rachel was born on November 12, 1977 in Lincoln County, Montana. Her parents have said the family background is Czech, Swedish, and German, as well as some faint traces of Native American blood. Rachel was the second child born to Lawrence and Ruthann Dolezal. Her older brother was said to have been favored by her parents. It was reported that Rachel's mother had complications during her pregnancy with Rachel, which caused some resentment toward her daughter. Allegedly, Rachel did not feel her parents gave her as much attention and love as they did her older brother. This may have caused Rachel to have feelings of rejection and isolation as a young child, which may have had a major impact in how she saw herself and the world around her. When Rachel and her brother were older, their parents decided to adopt more children. They ended up adopting three African-American children and one child from Haiti. On the outside, the family appeared to be perfect. Rachel's parents were religious and had high expectations for their children. However, there were also accusations of abuse. Rachel said she was born and lived in a teepee and that her family hunted for food with a bow and arrow, allegations her parents deny. Rachel also accused her parents of emotional and physical abuse and allegedly equated how her parents treated her to how black slaves were treated. Rachel was homeschooled and had a strict upbringing in a predominantly white community. She went to college at Bellhaven University in Jackson, Mississippi, where she obtained her bachelor's degree and then she attended Howard University, which is a historically black university, where she obtained a master's of fine arts degree. According to her parents, they don't think Rachel was deceptive on the application to attend Howard, but they said that the school may have automatically assumed Rachel was black because of her artwork. Rachel is a pretty good artist and she often creates African related art pieces. Her thesis at Howard was a series of paintings presented from the perspective of a black man, which is interesting since she was born and raised as a white female. While at Howard University, Rachel is said to have started changing her look, which she allegedly said helped her to be accepted more. Rachel also ended up suing Howard University for discrimination. Her lawsuit said she was allegedly denied scholarship funds, a teacher's assistant position, and other opportunities. Allegedly, she also said that the removal of her artwork from the student exhibition was because she was white. Despite saying it was because she was white, Rachel said her lawsuit started out as a pregnancy discrimination case, but somehow turned into a racial discrimination case. Ultimately, Rachel did not win the lawsuit, but she did graduate from Howard with honors. Rachel married a black man named Kevin Moore in 2000 and had one son together. However, the marriage did not last long and they divorced in 2004. Allegedly, her ex-husband Kevin did not like the way Rachel changed her look. He didn't like the fact that she was changing her appearance to look more like a black woman. However, Rachel used the divorce as an opportunity to dive more into her new identity. Rachel adopted her 16-year-old younger brother, Isaiah Dolezal, in 2010. Isaiah also accused their parents of abuse, as did Rachel's adoptive sister, Esther. Two of Rachel's brothers denied the accusations of abuse but did say their parents were strict. In a blog post, Esther said, I grew up in a pretty messed up family, and by messed up, I don't necessarily mean dysfunctional. We were that too, 
but just plain strange. According to their mother, Ruth Ann, Esther suffers from reactive attachment disorder and she seeks to cause trouble in the family. Their mother went on to say she is a chronic liar. Esther also accused their older brother Joshua of sexual misconduct, charges which were later dropped due to a lack of evidence. However, Rachel, Esther, and Isaiah stand behind the accusations of abuse that they say happened in the family. Ruth Ann and Lawrence, their parents, deny all accusations of abuse. Rachel's alleged childhood abuse would seem to support her identity issues, especially since Rachel equated her abuse to that of black slaves. In her mind, her parents were her oppressors and she seemed to somehow create a new identity to protect herself. I'm not saying what she did was right, but I do hope she has received counseling to work out the issues from her past. Rachel's story got me thinking about a documentary I watched a few months ago called Misha and the Wolves. A woman from Massachusetts named Misha De Fonseca published a memoir about being a Holocaust survivor raised by wolves. In Misha's story, after her Jewish parents were deported by Nazis, Misha, who was seven years old at the time, hiked through the forest for years to find her parents. Misha says she was adopted into a pack of wolves that protected and raised her until she was found by people several years later. However, after the publication of Misha's memoir and the release of a movie based on Misha's life, the whole story was found to be a lie. Misha was not Jewish and she was not raised by wolves. Misha was born into a Catholic family. After her parents died, Misha was taken into her extended family's home. Her extended family members were not kind to Misha and thus Misha felt rejected and isolated to the point where she created a whole new identity for herself. After Misha's story was outed as a lie, she released this statement. They called me the traitor's daughter because my father was suspected of having spoken under torture. This book, this story is mine. It is not the actual reality, but it was my reality, my way of surviving. In 2017, Rachel released a memoir on her racial identity entitled In Full Color, Finding My Place in a Black and White World. Rachel and Misha seem to have similarities in their stories. They both said they were abused as children. This left them feeling rejected by their families. They felt alone and isolated, which led to developing an identity for survival. They needed something to survive what they felt were less than ideal situations growing up. I do believe that they both knew full well what they were doing and the consequences if they were discovered. But for some reason, the desire for validation and attention overwhelmed their fear of retribution. They were willing to risk all to find a place they could belong, even if that meant disappointing or possibly even hurting individuals along the way. In this new identity, they could be everything they weren't allowed to be growing up. In Rachel's situation, I think she has even convinced herself of her story. I really hope she's able to talk it out in counseling as it seems there are more issues to work out besides her racial identity. I must admit, when I watched the documentary about Rachel a couple of years ago, I did feel sympathy for her. I don't think she's a bad person and I really do think some things happened in her past that helped to contribute to her situation. But I also think she fabricated the stories about the racial harassment when she was the chapter president of the NAACP. 
that to me demonstrates some potentially dangerous behavior. However, I do still feel bad for her because she has struggled for the last several years since being outed as faking her blackness. She hasn't been able to get a job. She had another child in 2016. She's had to get on public assistance, but then she was investigated for welfare fraud. She's pretty much has had to hustle to try to make ends meet. As a former single mother, I can empathize with any woman in that situation. Rachel is actually a pretty good artist. So she has relied on trying to sell her artwork. She has published a book, but even that didn't take off as much as she'd like. She has even resorted to braiding hair and doing other black hairstyles to try to make ends meet. Despite all these challenges, Rachel still insists on identifying as a black woman. She still tans her skin or wears makeup to make her appear darker. She still wears her braids or weave in black hairstyles. Technically, she could go back to her white cultural look and may have a better chance of being accepted or at least getting a job. However, I wonder if she feels she must continue the image for her biracial sons because she doesn't want them to see her in a different light. I'm not sure. What do you all think? Rachel has even gone as far as changing her name in hopes of getting better employment opportunities. She changed her name to Nkichi Diallo, which is a Nigerian name that means gift from God. However, I wonder why she chose such an unusual name in America if the intent was to increase her employment opportunities. I don't think there's anything wrong with African names. I gave my oldest daughter an African name. However, as an IO psychologist who specializes in business hiring practices, it is not unusual for employers to knowingly or perhaps unknowingly discriminate based on the applicant's name. Rachel says she's still going to go by Rachel Dolezal as well in public which I found to be true as I did come across her YouTube channel. So what has Rachel been up to lately? When she was interviewed by Tamarin Hall, she said she hasn't had a job for over six years. Rachel is a very educated woman, but she said no one would hire her for the jobs she's qualified for. She said she even applied to be a maid at a hotel and was turned down for that as well. Rachel said life has been hard, but she hasn't given up. She relocated to Arizona and she hopes to get some teaching jobs at a university. Recently, she is also noted as an OnlyFans performer where she showcases her art, hair, and fitness journey. Are y'all familiar with OnlyFans? Because I was not. I had to look it up. It is described as a subscription site that enables content creators to monetize their influence. However, it seems to be better known as a subscription and pay-per-view platform used widely by sex workers and adult entertainers. Rachel has said that she will not be using it for that purpose though, and she will only be posting tasteful content. However, this latest move does seem to indicate that she is still struggling financially. I really sympathize with her in that aspect as I know that has to be incredibly challenging and frustrating and I hope she finds a good path for herself soon. So what do you think? Do you think Rachel has the right to call herself black? Are you sympathetic to her story or do you think she tried to take advantage of the situation? Leave a comment and let's talk about it. Have you watched the new Netflix movie about passing yet? What are your thoughts on passing? Remember, don't forget to leave a respectful comment. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up to help YouTube push it out to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell 
to get notified when I post new content. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon.